Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the meringue cow. This is a very easy and fast project, and it makes a great gift if you wanna make something handmade but don't have a whole lot of time, or if you need to make a whole lot of them to give as gifts, uh, this makes a great project. And it's crocheted in a simple V stitch. And for this project, you'll need one skein of Lion Brand's Wool Ease Thick and Quick. And this colorway is the, called the Fisherman colorway. And for this tutorial, we're gonna use the Barley colorway. You'll also need a nine millimeter N crochet hook. You'll need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle to do the finish work and the seaming. And I would recommend finding the largest tapestry needle you're able to find because the yarn is pretty bulky. The finished cowl measures about six inches tall and has a circumference of 24 inches. So let's get started. So we're going to begin our cowl by making a starting chain of 49. We're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook and pull up. Just tighten it on your hook and we're gonna make a starting chain of 49. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and pull it through the loop. That's your first chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight. 46, 47, 48, and 49. And I just wanted to mention that the barley colorway has, it's very tweedy and has these little pieces and sometimes they can fall out and that's okay. That's part of what makes the yarn so pretty. If you're having a lot of shedding with any yarn, not just this yarn, you can, um, as long as it's machine washable, that'll take care of a lot of those extra things that fall off. So let's begin the foundation row. We have our starting chain of 49, and I wanted to mention to make your starting chain pretty loose because if it's too tight, it'll draw up the one side. So you can see our starting chain is pretty long, and what we're essentially doing is I'll go back to the cow from the beginning of the video. What we're essentially doing, I've, I've unseamed it. When I showed it to you before, it was seamed, but I went ahead and unseamed it just to show you it's a very long rectangle. And then what we'll do is we'll seam it at the end. So we're just gonna make a long rectangle. And let's go back to our other cowl that we're working on. So we're gonna get, begin the foundation row. And if your chain is too tight, if it's seeming like it's too tight, just go up a hook size or two. Um, and that'll help you get your starting chain nice and loose. Okay, so to begin our foundation row, we're going to work our first, if we come back to our V stitch, we're gonna work our first V in the fourth chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So one, two, three, and four. So in this chain right here, we're going to work our first V by making a double crochet to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Have some more yarn shedding. Then we're gonna make a chain one and then another double crochet all in the same chain. Just like that. And that will make our first V. You can see it right there. We're going to skip two chains, one and two, and in the next chain, we're going to do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So now we have our second V. 
We're gonna do this, keep doing the same thing all the way across. Skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain, work the next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Keep doing this all the way across. Skip two chains, one, two, in the next chain. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We have a few V's now across. Pull some more yarn out of our yarn ball. Skip two more chains, one, two, in the next chain, double crochet. Whoops, can back it up a little. There we go. Double crochet. Oh, my yarn doesn't want to stay on my hook. There we go. Chain one, double crochet. So we're just going to keep going in this manner. Skip two chains, the next chain, work another V, and we'll do this all the way across to the very end of the row. Skip two in the next chain. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. This is a really easy stitch. All you need to know to do this entire project is a chain and a double crochet, and that's it. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And we're just gonna keep going. This is the rest of our starting chain. So skip two chains in the next chain, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So I'm gonna keep going with mine and we'll rejoin at the end of the row. So we're coming up to the end of the row and we're just gonna finish up the row the same way. Skip two chains and in that very last chain, we'll work our very last V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So our foundation row is complete and it'll look kind of like this. A nice row of V's all the way across. So to go on to the next row, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work just like that. Then in each one of these V's, like this, all the way across, we're going to work a V on top of the V. So it'll have a stacked effect. Now if we go back, to our other cowl, we can see how these V's, there's one, there's one, how they're kind of stacked on top of one another, okay? So we're going to do the same thing, double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the center of each one of these V's, okay? So double crochet, Chain one, double crochet, pull some more yarn out. And as you can see, these V's are now stacked. Okay, the next V will do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, just like that. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So you're just going to keep doing this all the way across. 
into each V all the way across. So to finish up our row, we've come to the very last V on our row. So we're just going to work a V into that V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So we've come to the very end. And then we have here the turning chain from the previous row. Right into that space, we're going to work one double crochet. So our row is complete. So you're just going to keep repeating the row we just did over and over and over until you get the desired height. Let's go back to this one. I worked six rows to get the desired height of six inches. So you can keep going if you want it to be taller than the one I have shown, or if you want it to be a little skinnier, just work less rows. I had, I used about a skein of the woolies, thick and quick, and I just wanted to make you aware to check the yardage. Um, sometimes they have varying yardages, but I used a full skein of the uh, woolies, thick and quick in the solids. So you might get a little more, a little less with some of the other prints or tweeds. And to finish up your cow, we can get this one aside. You're going to fasten off, and then you want to give yourself, before cutting the yarn, you want to give yourself a decently long tail. Because you're instead of using another piece of yarn, we're going to use the tail to seam up our cow. So you have another tail from when you began. And you're just going to sandwich these two together. Zoom out a little. There we go. Okay, now I used a tapestry needle and I'm going to show you two ways to seam up your cow. One way is to use a crochet hook and just slip stitch it all the way across. The other method is to use a tapestry needle and whip stitch it all the way across. Okay, so let me show you the slip stitch method first and then I'll show you the whip stitch, okay? So, we've sandwiched our edges together, and this is gonna be our working yarn. We fastened off, we're gonna put a knot in there. So you're gonna insert your hook into the first loop, and again into the other first loop of the other edge, okay? So just all through all edges, you're gonna have one, two, three, four loops on there. Then you're going to take your yarn, you're just going to wrap it around the hook and pull it through all the loops. You'll have a loop on your hook, just like that. Okay? Then you're going to take your hook and insert it into the next loop. Because we're working along the side, it can be a little tricky. Just try to find the loops the best you can. So we put it through all the loops, the next stitch down and pull it through all the loops. Then you'll have two loops on your hook. Pull that loop that you just made through the loop that's already on your hook. And that's how you slip stitch seam. Now here we have a big hole created from the V. So you can just go right into that space, both sides, pull it through, and then work the slip stitch like we just did. Just keep doing this all the way across when you're working, when you seam sides like this versus the top, sometimes it can be a little tricky trying to find the loops and keep everything nice and straight. But you're just gonna try to make it as neat as possible. And you'll just do this all the way across. I'm just gonna stop here so I can show you. But you'll do this all the way to the end. And then when you open it up, you'll have a nice neat seam. Okay, so next thing I want to do is show you how to do the whip stitch. So we're going to put our crochet hook aside. And then we're going to thread <clears throat> our tapestry needle. Now this is very thick yarn, so you can give it a little twist and guide it through. If you're having trouble threading your needle, please watch my video on 
how to use a needle threader. It's an extremely handy tool that'll help you thread your needle if you're having trouble getting it through or having trouble seeing the eye of the needle. Sometimes they're kind of small or your yarn is extremely thick like this. So again, we're just gonna sandwich the two pieces together and then take our working yarn and then just do the same thing. Come through the loops. We're using a tapestry needle instead of the hook. So the whip stitch really is just a spiral through the edge of a work, piece of uh, crochet or knitting or sewing. So we're just going all the way across our seam, just like that. This makes a nice, uh, tight, sturdy stitch, nice seam. And you want to check yourself along the way, make sure everything's still lined up nice and neat. And I know it's tempting when you finish a project to hurry up and do the finish work, but I want to encourage you to just take the time, make sure your finish work is nice and neat and looks pretty because it makes a huge difference after you've spent all this time working on your project and crocheting it and making sure all your crochet stitches are perfect. So to make sure your finish work really shows off your project as well. So we're just coming down the edge here, with our whip stitch, almost to the end. And again, if you prefer to just crochet the pieces together when you're done or do it this way, it's completely up to you. It's a total personal preference and they make both make a great seam. Okay, so here we are at the end. I'm just gonna get one more little stitch in there. So I have two ends. Put our tapestry needle aside. I'm just gonna tie them together. Make a nice secure knot. I like to do lots of knots, but I tend to overdo my knots. So then we have two ends. So we're gonna take our tapestry needle once again. That makes a nice sturdy seam. <clears throat> and again, this is gonna be the inside of the cow. We're gonna turn it out. So let's thread our tapestry needle and weave in the ends. So what I like to do, just thread it with a tail then come down your seam in one direction. Again, this seam is very snug, so I was gonna, I need to wiggle it a little to work it in there. Okay, so come in one direction and then come in the other. This will help to keep your ends for, from popping out. <clears throat> and it's not completely foolproof, but it certainly helps. Then you're gonna just give it a little tug Cut the end, and then we'll repeat what we just did for the other tail. Just thread your needle, and then just work, work it through. Pull it in one direction, give it a tug, pull it in the other direction. And you can take your scissors, give it a little trim, and I like to just kind of straighten my seam out. So that's what it's going to look like. And then you're going to turn it out. And your cow is complete. So this is what our finished cow is going to look like. And again, this yarn comes in lots of different colors. <clears throat> if you want to substitute, I would just recommend looking at the yarn label. You can look at any yarn label and it'll give you the recommended hook size. You want to look for a yarn with a recommended hook size. Um, of the end hook that we use today. So if you want to substitute yarn, that's perfectly fine. Just look for a yarn that recommends an end hook and that'll help you. So that's it. That's our meringue cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest fiber flux video updates. Thanks again.